All right, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Confidential Computing Consortium panel discussion today. Uh, pleased to have you join us. We're gonna talk for a few minutes today about the continuing growth and exciting evolution of confidential computing as a technology, as a market, and as a new opportunity for all of us as, as technical and security professionals. Um, my name is David Green. I'm the chair of the Outreach Committee for the Confidential Computing Consortium. I'm also the Chief Revenue Officer at Vertanix, one of the companies who's active in this space as a software provider for confidential computing uh, solutions. And I'm honored to be working today and talking today with Ava Black and Mike Purcell. Uh, Ava, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then Mike, you can do the same. Sure. Uh, so my name is Ava Black. My pronouns are they and them. And I work right now in the Azure Office of the CTO. Uh, when I started working with the foundation, I was in our confidential computing team. So I've sort of seen it from in a product group and sort of just as an open source advisor. Uh, I don't currently have an official role in the consortium. I'm just kind of a, a ne'er-do-well hanging around, uh, <laughs> kicking up trouble everywhere I can. Um, who, does, who does small projects like organize the developer forums? So. <laughs> yeah, little things like organize a conference and uh, kickstart our attestation working group, you know. Excellent. And Mike? Yeah, hi, I'm Mike Bursell, uh, he, him, his. Uh, and uh, I am a CEO of Profion, uh, a, a startup. Um, and uh, before that, I was with Red Hat. And I've been for, uh, part of the, um, open, uh, of the uh, Confidential Computing Consortium uh, from the beginning, when, when Red Hat joined as one of the founding members. Uh, and I've served on the, uh, the governing board, on the uh, technical advisory committee, I've hung out in the outreach committee a bit, I've been involved with the, uh, one of the, the, one, with the special interest group, uh, I've even acted for a while as uh, the treasurer. So I've seen all, all different parts of it. So uh, yeah, very, very pleased to be here today. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. Well, th thank you both for being here. And, and for, for everyone who's joining us, the, the Confidential Computing Consortium, if you're not familiar with the organization, is a community that's focused on open source license projects that are looking to secure data in use uh, and accelerate the adoption of confidential computing. The, the, the core idea of confidential computing is that we want to protect data across its entire life cycle. We've had at our disposal a strong series of uh, technologies for securing data at risk, and securing data in transit. But we haven't had a good solution for securing data in use. And fundamentally, that's what confidential computing is intended to do. The core work of the project focuses on open collaboration between different vendors who are helping to build the ecosystem and the technology framework in the space. Uh, and also really driving a set of open source projects that can start to make the power of confidential computing more broadly available across the industry to users everywhere. And as you've heard, we have two of these key people who have been helping to create that here. You know, Mike, now you were involved on day one when this whole thing got started. Um, so maybe you just give a little context. So what, what was the impetus for the consortium? Um, why, 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 did, why did these companies come yeah, together? Yeah, sure. I, so I was involved for kind of day minus several, actually. <laughs> day so, minus several. Uh, yeah, no, so a, a bunch of folks got together. I mean, Intel was one of the uh, initial people interested, and, and then IBM and Microsoft, and started saying, look, this is important stuff. Um, and we think that it's important in the context of open source. And um, wouldn't it make sense to have a consortium, a, a place we can talk about stuff, which avoids you know, all the anti-competitive, antitrust stuff. And we can actually have real discussions, technical discussions, talk about the market, how it's going around these technologies, trust execution environments. Um, and and then it, it really started building from there. Um, IBM uh, talked to Red Hat, We're, we'd been bought by them by then, and said, look, what do you think? And we said, uh, Red Hat said, well, we've got this project that uh, is in fact in this space. We think it's a great idea. Uh, and it, it just went from there. Other people were invited. And um, I think the foundation was officially kicked off in October 2019 um, with, a, with a, it has sort of three different types of membership. There's um, the premier members, there's general members and there's associate members uh, for people like uh, academic or, or, or government entities who want to be involved. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it kind of kicked off. And, and just as kind of added as context, Mike, so the, the premier, members, premier members right now, just to give everyone a sense of who some of the people helping mm -hmm. to drive this forward are, are, are Intel, as Mike mentioned, Red Hat, as Mike mentioned, as along with Accenture, the Ant Group, Arm, Facebook, Google, Huawei, and Microsoft, Avis Company. And there's what, sort of 25 or so 
um, general yeah. members. It's something like yeah, we've got that. another another twenty five general members, and again, those are those those are a mix of companies. You know, some are some are more startup companies like my company, Fortanix, that are trying to build out the new technology in the space. Other are established industry players, people like Cisco, um, who are actively monitoring the space and looking how they can contribute to it along the way. Absolutely. And I think one of the really important things to mention, actually, is that all of the major chip vendors are, mm -hmm. are members, are chip vendors are members of the consortium. So Intel, AMD, ARM, um, and IBM via the Red Hat IBM um, sort of collaboration. So there's a real, you know, the, the hardware vendors are behind it, which has lent really good um, momentum to what's going on. Now, Eva, you, you also got involved very early, not quite a day minus whatever, um, but how, how have you seen the, 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 the work of the consortium and more important, the marketplace around competition community evolve over that time? I think I started uh, probably around January. February, I think was RSA, February 2020 was RSA, and that was the first time I met a bunch of folks uh, in the group and sort of really jumped in with both feet. Uh, and there was a lot of excitement and a lot of, of interest from Companies, I think we had, uh, I want to say it was like five open source projects that were kind of coming in, um, three that were like really well known and a couple more kind of in the wings. We've had more open source projects join. I think there's been a lot of really good um, cross industry connections coming out of this uh, in, in the what year and a half since I joined, a year and three quarters. Um, a lot of work between this uh, foundation and other foundations to start pollinating the ideas how do we enable confidential computing use cases into cloud native computing, into other, other areas? Um, and you know, some of my work, work right now with uh, supply chain security, the same concepts come up there. How do we do attestation? How do we do you know, um, isolated uh, execution environments, runtime environments? And I'm seeing work uh, spin up around like the Linux kernel and containers to protect workloads in use. So really we've created a, a good um, a good center of gravity for work happening in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you know, what's interesting, if I think about what I've seen happen, so my, my introduction to the consortium actually was uh, uh, the press release went out, I think, my second week at Fortanix. So I was like, you know, what, 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 what is this thing and what is going on you've all been working Surprise. on? Surprise. It, it had been months in the process at that point, right? Um, but, but I think the, to, to me what's happening, and to, to, to the comment you just made, Eva, um, the, the ideas have been translated into technology and the technology has been translated into projects and, and in, the, in the real world. And I think that, to me, has been the most exciting shift over the last two years is confidential computing moving from you know, interesting idea that we can talk about academically to interesting applications um, in, in, mm -hmm. in industry and in companies um, that we can start to start to see it paying off. And that may be in things like yeah. security analytics uh, or securing devices and things on those lines. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, yeah, I'd agree with that. I think one of the other things is that there's been um, a sort of gelling of understanding of what the technologies are and how you define them. So mm -hmm. one of the things, the outreach committee, so the outreach is what we decided not to call the marketing committee, but, <laughs> but hey. for those who, who don't come to it, because we don't think it's a much more so. community, uh, community basis. So the outreach committee has done a great job, you know, with, with the other folks as well, I think of working with people like analysts to say, well, when you're talking about confidential computing, are you talking about the same thing as the rest of the industry and trying to right. align the industry on what we're talking about? And I think there's there's still some work to do, obviously, but I really do think that when you talk about confidential computing now, you can do so with some sort of certainty that if either people kind of know what you're talking about or you can point them at a well defined yep. um, description of what that is. You right. know, there have been some white papers published by the Confidential Computing Consortium, which helped define the stuff. And allowing people to have those conversations, yeah, it leads to exactly the sort of stuff you're talking about, David, where people can say, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Here are some, um, uh, some market opportunities. Here is the sectors that are interesting. Here mm -hmm. are um, some projects which fit or don't fit or might fit in the future in, in exactly this, this realm. And I think that's been a really positive and really important part of what uh, the uh, the CCC has done uh, already. I, I agree, Mike, and let's not forget open source. The I number say, let's, of- Let's talk about some of the components of this, yeah. Ava. Maybe, maybe that's a good segue. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about some of the projects that are making this happen. Um, you have any particular ones in mind? No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I keep, 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 keep on the path you're heading down. 
uh, just I'm just thinking of, of the, the amount of work I've seen in other groups, other open source right. projects or, or foundations to pick up the concepts that, Mike, as you said, you know, we we have done a lot of the outreach from the consortium through the white papers, to work with analysts, through conferences and talks um, to help align everybody on consistent terminology and an understanding of what this technology enables. And I'm, I'm appreciating uh, a lot of that uh, sort of percolating up into places like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, Linux kernel, uh, Kata containers, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing the same concepts now with consistent uh, sort of collective understanding and reference points actually getting worked on. Whereas two years ago, I think a lot of that was nascent. People were aware of like, yeah, you know, the chip vendors are working on something, but, right. but we don't know how to use it yet. And that, I think that one of the things that, you know, we hope to talk about in this, in this panel was how we got to where we are. And, and, and I think this is one of the, the interesting things. From the beginning, um, as a group, and I, I have to give a lot of credit to Steve Wally, who's the chair and has been from the beginning of the CCC for you know trying to, to push us in this direction. He was always of the opinion that this should be a body which is about welcoming and working with. Yes. Um, rather than just yes. getting as many you know logos on the page as possible right. we right. prefer right. to have fewer people working you know really well together yeah. um and 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 reaching out to the rest of the community and what like Ava's saying is absolutely key if we're just doing stuff on our own well that's kind of lovely but right. doesn't really help yeah. the, the broader picture. And this is about a change in the industry. And that means the community needs to work out how to engage with that and, and have a way of uh, maybe a center of, not even a center of gravity, but certainly a way of guiding and working with. And that's what I think the CCC's tried to do. Ava? Yeah, a big, a big part of, I think, what you're both referencing though is, is actually the, the consortium been putting a framework in place for what you need in terms of the components of confidential computing and the elements of confidential computing. But not to prescribe a solution, right? right. We, are, we are not trying to uh, say, this is the, the tool or the technology you need. You need one of X, one of Y, and this is how you put them together. We might give some examples, um, but we're not trying to prescribe that mm -hmm. or tell anybody else exactly what they're supposed to do. And that's really important to how we build a community, how we enable all of this. And I, I've been pretty clear uh, in my work with the TAC and the attestation working group. Um, and, and to Mike, to your question of, is it better to be a smaller group with better sort of more cohesion or a bigger group with more things in the tent? There's a, there's a good tug of war across that discussion everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm of, of both opinions. Uh, we should welcome all projects, but it's beneficial to all projects for us to work together and to reach out to other other groups and see where we can collaborate. And it's Absolutely. really important. No, I, I didn't mean to say that we should be uh, having a very small tent. It's all about it. And we've, we've always been very welcoming. It's been part of what it is. We've always said that Absolutely. all meetings are open to everybody. And, and all projects are welcome. Stuff we need to do. Sorry, what's that, Eva? And all projects are welcome in that tent. Absolutely, yeah. It's just about saying we don't want to just pick up projects or um, or companies or organizations right. just to have a really long list of, of, of logos. Right, right, it's, right, about, right, right. it's about being inclusive um, without just well, you know, ticking, or, ticking as many boxes as possible. That, that doesn't really help. One of the first uh, work streams, I know, Mike, you were heavily involved in with Dave Thaler, and this was in progress when I joined. I think it might have finished uh, just a little before I met you, David. I was defining the mission and the scope that's what I was going to say. That's where I was going to go next. Yep, yeah. yeah. And so, that's, so, so that's talk a huge about David, part of you were there for that, right? So, because mm -hmm. you know, I think that, that, that's an important, that was an important boundary to set yeah. in, in the evolution of the organization and the market opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's been crucial and in every open source foundation that I've worked with right. over the past while, right? You need to define um, sort of what's in and what's out. And that's not to exclude anybody, but to create a cohesive community working together towards a specific uh, tangible objective. Right, and so, so, so we're what, what that is, for the consortium. So maybe elaborate for a minute for those watching this. What 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 is in and what is out as a result of that work? Well, should I should I read the definition? If you go to the go very front page, yes. confidentialcomputing.io, it says the yeah. confidential computer consortium is a community focused on projects securing data in use and accelerating the adoption of confidential computing through open collaboration. Um, 
we've got open in there we've got confidential computing in there we've got community we've got projects we've got a you know the brief data in use thing which is kind of the core um <laughs> thing we're trying to do i i it took a bit of no, quite took quite a lot of crafting yeah, it took a lot of I time think it does yeah. a pretty good job and that's that's backed up by the tax definition of what is confidential computing right the, yes the mission statement references confidential computing without defining it and then the tac defined it and that that work collectively took what a year yeah, like it, it sounds like, I, I know, it took a lot of time. It sounds <laughs> silly, that, like you just you wrote a sentence. Why did it take all of these people a year to write a sentence? Because <laughs> of the, the, the importance of this in defining a community. I, I, I do want, you know, this, this panel is about how do, you, how do you build and grow a community and, and what has our journey been? And that has actually been a really important part of it. Why, 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 I mean, I, and, I, and, and that was a very constructive part of it too, right? And, and, it, and so, you know, where, where, what was the outcome of that, Ava? And, and also, what did we learn or as an organization, do you think, in the process of getting to that outcome? It's, it's all about the process, not the destination, the journey, not the destination, okay. Okay. right? Okay. So the process of all of the, the premier, premier members and a bunch of the general members working together for a year to come up with this also changed all of those organizations in subtle ways. Mm -hmm. It got us to agree, right, on what is confidential computing and mm -hmm. what are we working on together in this foundation. That, that effort of bringing everyone together to the table and giving, you know, holding space and giving time to come to that con consensus, excuse me, that's the critical part of community building. Mm -hmm. It's the people. <laughs> Let me read out what the definition is as well. So we've talked about what the, <laughs> what the mission is and the definition. This is um, the, the, the first uh, sentence in the main body of the, uh, the white paper, uh, the technical white paper is confidential computing is the protection of data in use by performing computation in a hardware based trusted execution environment. Uh, and the immediately after that it says C section four for the definition of a trusted ex uh, execution yeah. because it would be far too simple if we just had one thing, right? But, <laughs> so, but we we spent a lot of time. Every, uh, oh my god, so uh, much almost time! Almost every single word. And I think possibly every single word of that was uh, was debated. Yep. Uh, and or the. I mean, we're debating particles yeah, extensively. That level of thing. Oh, yes. By with ha, it's it was, uh -huh. but it was really. I think really useful for the community. It helped us build, um, you know, a, a shared purpose. But the other thing is, it, it at the personal level, it allowed people um, yeah. and organisations to get to know each other, to yeah. realise that people, why people had the agendas they did, to realise where compromise was possible, why compromise was impossible was sorry was possible and important, <laughs> and and to get to know each other and to work out what sticks were in the ground and why, and what we needed to do to, you know, to step past some of the, our expectations and think beyond just our little companies or our big companies and, and out into the wider market. And it was a really interesting thing. And I, one of the things I've really enjoyed about this community is the, is the respect that you know, we, people have for each other at the technical level, at the personal level. It's one of the things I'm really sorry yeah. about is that you know, I'm not gonna make it a, over to to the open source summit this this year um because there's a whole bunch of people i'd love to be chatting with over a glass of something right. um and yeah. uh, and it's not gonna happen <laughs> um break that down like kind of on, on the two dimensions we've been bouncing between there right there the, 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 there's the content dimension there's the process dimension right so from from the from the in when you have a definition like that you, you, we focus a lot on what landed on the page and went in, but there's a whole body discussion about what didn't make it and what got left out. And I think sometimes it's really interesting to, 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 to draw that. So as people who were there as part of it, you know, what, 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 what was it that was in and out? And then I want to talk a bit more about the process of how that, how that happened as for organizationally. Okay, so I talk about so, so, some of the content. And if you want to talk about some of the process, do I have that? Sure. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll <laughs> okay, that. great. So, so one... <laughs> One thing that is out is is the word or the words and applications. Okay. Okay. So um, confidence computing is the protection of data in use. Now we could have put and applications in use, and there was a huge discussion about that. I I, I fell down very strongly on uh, yes, we should have that, and mm -hmm. decided actually that was a something that I could give on. 
Um, and and the, the, the question around that is, um, do we feel that in order to say something is confidential computing, it has in all cases to protect not just the data, but also um, the workload that is operating on that data. And we decided there were occasions when that might not be the case, or there were people, you know, there were technologies where it, they might get excluded, where that wouldn't be fair, because actually it probably did edge into what we generally felt was confidential computing. So that's a, a really good example of uh, of uh, something that was was done. Mm -hmm. um, hardware based. That was a yes. really strong yes. one. That would that took us a long time. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by hardware based? So that's a further definition of the document. In but, in hardware or with hardware, we ended on hardware based. And hardware based, yes. Yeah. So uh, okay. CPUs was an option. We said no, we don't do that because in the future it might be GPUs or uh, or, or DPUs or, or pretty much anything you can think of. But hardware we felt was important. Um, things like enclave was thrown around, but that's a specific term associated with a particular um, technology. Right. Um, there are a whole bunch of this, but the hardware based was a was a, a long fought. I wouldn't say battle. It's not really fought. It was a, a much debated topic because we thought that we, it was really really core cool to how, how to get into that. So there's just yeah. a couple of couple of the the phrases that that had a bit of a go. One that got out and one that stayed in. Ava, yeah, you want to yeah, talk about yeah. more about the sort of how yeah, we did that, that, it? Sure. In terms of so the, the process and, and the impact that this debate had, right? It dragged, it, it dragged on, it took um, about a year that I remember for, for this particular discussion. Um, and in that process, I know I learned a lot more about the space. I think everybody did. We learned about each other's use cases. We learned how each other um, negotiate, push and pull in conversation. And as Mike said earlier, we learned how to trust each other more because we were debating in good faith. Yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah. I I have a very particular style of of, of argument or, or discussion, which tends to be go in really hard with what I feel and debate that as hard as possible. But if I give to step back and, and do that, other people right. have very different ways of doing that. And yeah. one of the things was realizing that my style wasn't always appropriate for particular types of discussion. And mm -hmm. um, uh, Ava is very good at, uh, at nudging. Uh, nudging me and other people i think on occasion <laughs> saying, uh, maybe you know maybe on a back channel you might want to just tone that down a bit um and, so that and that's, that's part of building that's part of building an inclusive community it absolutely right? is it yeah, absolutely yeah, is yeah, and yeah, yeah. um and having so i i think you know if we're talking about building it's not just about the people with the strong technical views or the loudest Please. voices you need lubricants. You need um, people who can um, push and chide and encourage um, yeah. in different yeah. ways. Yeah. And I, yeah. I hope that actually one of the things we've learned is that each of us can be that in different situations. Yeah. Um, and I prefer the phrase hold space, right? Yeah. You yeah. hold space, but then you have to keep everybody in that space. And sometimes that means reaching on the on a back channel to say, hey, Right now, you're making the space less welcoming for right. some people, so tone right. it down. Or, right. hey, let's make let's let's pause a moment and make sure this person has a chance to speak, has space for themselves and their opinion to be brought into the room as well and be seen. Right. So that's all part of and really essential to community building and the work we've done in the past two years. Well, and, and Ava, and also to come my you a minute ago, it also does go back to part of the, the core charter of the organization of every member's welcome, every project meeting criteria is welcome. Yeah. We're a transparent yes. collaborative community. And as members, contributors, and leaders, we pledge to make participation or harassment free experience for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. th those are great words on a page. It's yeah. a matter of practice, really not it. dogma, to actually live that. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's ongoing work. It's never done. So tell one of the stories from the trenches, Ava, because I'm sure there was a moment where there was a contentious, I was a, there was a contentious, contentious you can debate. Use me, Ava. You can use me, Ava. You know, <laughs> there, there might have been this Gosh. guy from Red Hat who was kind of hard to work with sometimes. I don't know. I, but, but share one of the battle, one of the battle stories of this. So, um, honestly, I, as much as as Mike has uh, his style, my style to to dive into those moments, uh, crucial conversations, is to do my best and let them go. So I don't mm -hmm. have one at the ready. Okay. Right. I, I do have a time in mind that, you know, when, when I 
uh, I don't know. I don't know how you look at it. Rain you think, in or they, message they, they you. quietly pulled you to the side and they yeah, said, tell, that, that, remind me and I'll probably that, remember it. You can talk about it. Well, I, 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 I don't think there's one in particular that I, I would call out actually because they, it just feels like we've, we've come to a, uh, uh, we've come to, well, there have been times, Ava, when you and I have come uh, with slightly differing views, mm-hmm. but we both know that each other believes very strongly in open source and openness and transparency. So yes. when we've been discussing some of the things about how we how to do community, it may be that we have a different approach to it, but we know that we can almost certainly reconcile them because the, our principles are, are coming from the yeah. same place. And I think I know that you have a similar level of experience in open source right. Right. as I do. So we, we have a shared language there yeah. and yeah. that helps, uh, that helps to, to Uh, be able to talk about the things that are happening that may not be obvious, the sort of undercurrent of a conversation. And I know there have been a couple of times when there's been a heated discussion and I'll just ping you on the side and say, hey, you have a few minutes after this call to talk and then back away from it in the call so that there's no visible conflict. We don't need to have that debate and take up everybody's time going at some, you know, difference of opinion. And then we just hop on on a... you know, Zoom call, just the two of us and hash it out for 20 minutes right, and right. then end up talking about your book collection or my book collection or tea or whiskey or something. Yeah. So um, there's, there's actually another aspect of this I'd quite like to touch on, if, if that's okay, Ava. You, is that unless there's something you wanted to, to, to go? No, go for it. Which is, um, you read out, David, the thing uh, which we tend to say at the beginning of, of meetings, which is about, mm-hmm. you know, every member's in, uh, welcome and, and uh, is involved. And, you know, one of the things, again, that that Steve and us as a group were keen to make sure um, was um, clear from the beginning is that it's not the size of the company that gives you the, uh, you know, the important voice. So um, when I started, I was part of Red Hat and that was, you know, a fairly big company in the space. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but right from the beginning, there were smaller voices who, when they had things to say, were absolutely up there. Now, there are voting members, but actually we only be- generally do votes for when projects come in, um, right, right, right. Uh, when we need to spend money and stuff like that. And it's generally that the, the voting members are informed by the rest of the membership. So you know, when I left Red Hat uh, and I joined a startup, to start up, we weren't, we weren't even officially part of the um, organization. Um, I still felt I had a voice. And I, I established yeah. myself and people, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I'm quite good at finding a voice and finding my space myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'm alone in that. I think there are other organizations. Well, that, that, that. That, that, that's, that's certainly been the experience. That's certainly been the experience of coming from a much smaller company, right? Thinking that we're, we're going to sit at the table with, you know, with, with, with Red Hat and Microsoft and have a vote, have a say. And we absolutely have, right? And I think it's been one of the reasons why the community has thrived is, you know, a young company like Fortanix can walk in and and be part of the conversation, right? And and the and the the, inter- the interactions are there. And I think this does speak to the uh, the kind of the as the organization evolved, the scaffolding has evolved. You know, starting with the right words on the page in terms of the chart that kind of sets the tone. You know, a group of members that then live that. You know, why do you have to? Why do you spend a year on a definition? Because you need that. You need that anchor point to help ground the discussions, right? And I think, and I think the, the being deliberate in forming that scaffolding is what then allows the other activities of the organization to kind of to, to, to thrive yeah. on that. I like, I like the phrase scaffolding here. I think we've done a really good job as a foundation, uh, or, you know, community of practice, building out scaffoldings that rapidly enable work, right? Yeah. Whether it's startups in the space uh, engaging with the user, user council um, or, technical projects in open source, approaching the foundation and saying, hey, we'd like to, to contribute this. Uh, and we have a program from the TAC that you know, starts to assign mentors or find mentors to help those younger open source projects find their way in to this foundation and connect to the community. I think that's been really helpful to a lot of, a lot of the projects. Um, when I approached and said, hey, I think we, we need an actual working group for attestation, yeah. Yeah. It, it cuts across all of the companies, all of the projects is sort of the, the central um, axle, if you will, of, of the flywheel of confidential computing, how everything connects together. We need a space for those discussions to happen. Right, uh, right. It, it 
we didn't have a precedent for that as a group, right? We'd never established a working group before. And it was pretty easy for me without any official role to just right. say, hey, yeah. uh, this is how Let's I set up working groups in other foundations. Right, right. right. That's good. We copy that or, or change it for, for our needs and didn't take that long. Yeah. You, 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 you both commented on open source a few times, just watching our time here. Would, would this be a good time to tell, elaborate a little bit more about some of the open source projects and how that's working within the consortium? Yeah, fine. There's, there's one, one more thing I'd just like yeah, really yeah. to touch on because I think it plays into what- I'll put, I'll put Do that and we'll circle back. Yeah. Sorry, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll circle back, I think. But, yeah. and, and that is that another thing we decided to start with is, I mean, people will know the phrase minimum, minimum viable products. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows mm -hmm. about this. We decided that we should go with minimum viable governance. As few rules as Got you it. need to yeah. make sure that you can build the frameworks, basically. Uh, and and that has done done us very well. Um, there have been times we've had to add a little bit or even sort of tweak things back a bit. But mm -hmm. saying we don't need a charter which is fifteen pages long, mm -hmm. and only most of the charter really deals with membership and how projects and voting um, and voting. How and do which, you which control a budget? Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't deal with the minutiae of you know how you how you hold, how you get together for a meeting and and how you right, just, right, you know right. all those sorts of things we, and that's been very helpful for us sorry to bang about that but i think it kind of it fills out that conversation we've just been having yeah that's great that's great the the flip side of that oh, excuse me the flip side is we, we are really trying to work with the projects to enable as much interaction between the projects and the TAC or projects and each other or projects and other companies as those projects want. And, and that flexibility, to Mike's point, like the governing model here doesn't prescribe specific tools, mm -hmm. but it does say, go be helpful. Yeah. And, and, and how has the consortium, do you think, helped facilitate that? You know, what, are, what, are, what are lessons and what's been working there? Um, having a having a mentor, someone who's who's been in the foundation for a year or two, who understands how uh, and has the connections in place to uh, support a younger project, uh, maybe coming out of a, a research group or university who doesn't have the industry connections, uh, when they need to uh, pass through some step in the legal process of contributing IP or um, holding a meeting or joining joining an event, maybe they don't know how to set up a mailing list our way, or they want some help doing it, right? That mentor is just really a facilitator to connect them to the folks, whether it's at the Linux Foundation or together, the TAC yeah. or the governing board who can do that. Or for projects like, we really would love to run a CI system. Our, our little team at this uh, university or startup or wherever um, isn't, isn't uh, well-funded enough. We'd love to expand this to meet the needs of our community. Sometimes that kind of proposal becomes, or uh, the, the TAC mentor can help that become a proposal for the TAC to fund it, right? So how do we connect the dots to support projects is the biggest uh, sort of service that we provide to projects that want to join. So I, I've got an example as well, which is that, um, so there's a, a project which, with which I'm associated called NARCS, which is one of the projects, was a, one of the first projects in, in the uh, CCC. Um, and um, recently NARCS has got a community manager and the community manager is thinking, how can we grow NARCS? And thinking, okay, we could do outreachy and, and some intern stuff and hackathons and stuff. And uh, speaking speaking with Nick, who's, who's the, the, the community manager, um, we realized very quickly, and you know, he, he realized that the wrong thing to do was for NARCS to do this. Mm -hmm. The right thing to do was to go to, to the CCC and say, wouldn't it be great for confidential computing if we all did this or as many of the projects as we can? Right, right. We're together on about it. it together. Exactly, exactly. We, we, we can all benefit from it. Um, there's a, economies of scale and economies of scope. And mm -hmm. let's do this together. And frankly, it's something which is a, you know, each project could have done on its own, but it right. makes a whole lot more sense to do that. And and the framework to do that, the minimum go viable governance was really simple. Basically, he went, he convinced that a couple of other people on the outreach committee that it probably made sense. They they went to the outreach committee and presented it as an idea. The outreach committee said, well, yeah, okay. And then, but let's just check that the technical advisory committee, the TAC, thinks a good idea. It was mm -hmm. spread to them. They said yes, and now it's happening. Right, and right, right. In, in just a couple, you know, just a few short weeks. And right, I, I think that's a really good example. Yep.
Well, well, I think a great a great demonstration of what you're both talking about was the the developer the developer summit that was held mm -hmm. uh, back at the beginning of the summer, right? Yeah. Um, so maybe I mean, you know, Ava, you you were you 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 yeah. that was your brainchild. No, right? that was my baby. Yeah. So uh, talk um, a little bit about you know, <laughs> what, what, what what was what was the intent there, and 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 kind of yeah. what what came out from that. So the the my desire uh, sort of grew out of seeing all of the projects doing their own thing uh, last year, right? And I, I really want to facilitate within the foundation all the projects connecting. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, I don't know, I've always seen great stuff happen when developers working on similar things talk to each other. And I wanted right. to facilitate right. that. Um, OpenStack used to have a dev summit. Kubernetes has a dev mm -hmm. summit. Mm -hmm. um, Ubuntu has always had a dev summit. A lot of open source projects have these events where developers come together and sit around a whiteboard physically or virtually and hash out their ideas across project boundaries. And that cross-pollination of ideas uh, really helps accelerate the growth of, of any technical project, especially in open source. And I wanted to facilitate that in the middle of the pandemic when it's really right. hard right. Right. to just meet up in a hallway or a conference room and have that conversation. Uh, and so I spent a while talking to folks in and outside of the CCC what tools could work for that. Um, we put together a committee of volunteers, uh, some from this foundation, some from other foundations, and, and sort of, again, trying to build that cross-community connection. I found volunteers from other communities that are adjacent to confidential computing and, and would benefit from uh, using it, like cloud-native computing. Um, we're all going to need to get there, and lots of companies in this space are doing confidential containers or confidential VMs. So it made sense. It was a natural fit there. Um, I put together a team of volunteers and uh, put together a day, a single day of events, uh, one track of invited talks and a couple different rooms for developers to just go meet and hash out ideas. Each room had a moderator, a facilitator, um, who was just there to keep things on the rails mm -hmm. and take some notes and, and call time. That was really it. Uh, and some of those rooms were fantastically successful. And here I'm defining success as more than four people had a good conversation. Right, 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 right. That, that advanced the cause. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it advanced the technical work that the people were doing. Um, at the beginning of the day, here's the, the fun of an unconference is I didn't set the schedule. Other than those invited talks, I didn't set the schedule. I, I, everyone who attended, and I think we had 300-ish, uh, 350 attendees, something like that. Yeah, have to go yeah. check my notes. A bunch, yeah, yeah, but a bunch. Yeah, yeah. It was really good for, for a pandemic conference. Uh, they all pitched in their own ideas. And all we did was hold the space for folks, for smart folks with ideas to get together and talk about it and advance this work. Minim minimal viable governance in action, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. exactly. Yep. <laughs> so there's something I think it might be worth um, sort of explaining, which we've, we, we haven't really touched on, actually. Um, when Ava says, you know, she managed to, that they managed, sorry, to get, to get stuff together, um, and these different pro projects, you might assume that these projects are very aligned technically. If you think things like yeah. the Open OpenStack um, right. community, for instance, right. they're all right. parts of OpenStack, or they work with. They're all part of one thing. Yeah, they fit yeah. together. CCC right? yeah. has a whole bunch of projects which have different approaches using different technologies, different programming languages, at different places in the stack. Um, yep. to do yep. stuff associated with confidential computing. And, you know, I, I think things That's like the, the, the SIG, the Special Interest Group on Attestation, is a way of bringing some of their concerns together. But when it comes down to it, if you look at the work that NARX is doing versus the work that Grameen is doing versus what Oculum is doing, uh, Oc Oculum? Oculum? Uh, Oculum. versus uh, what the um, uh, OESDK, uh, Open Oculum SDK is doing, they have very different approaches. So you can't just assume that people are gonna to work together. It takes some doing to find um, points of reference, mm -hmm. shared points, and, and sometimes points of contention is useful as well. If something you can niggle it, which is different from sets of people, that could be a good starting point for, uh, for discussion and, and stuff as well. I don't mean in a bad way. It's just, you know, we're doing things this way, you're doing things this way, Let's talk about why that is. That can be mm -hmm. as useful as saying, well, let's all do it the same way. Um, and I think that, you know, you, you mustn't assume when you come to the CCC that all of the projects look together and you can, you know, can, 
you know, have one make script and it all works together. It's right, ab right. almost the Great opposite point. of that, right? Um, it, it's, it's back, back to building an ecosystem, right? An, an ecosystem yeah. is a really diverse place. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. that's really important because part of the ecosystem is, is something that we're working on at the moment is about this uh, user, uh, what's it called? The, um, the user... The end. The end user council, the end user advisory right. council. Yeah, I think that's right. one of the really the wrong, important wrong names for that. Yeah. But that's trying to encourage people who wouldn't necessarily be part of the consortium because they're not, I know they're not doing the technical you know, low level stuff or they're not in, in, invested at that sort of level, but want to be using confidential computing for stuff, whether mm -hmm. they be banks or governments or pharmaceutical companies or um, healthcare or, or edge or whatever it may be saying come here's a space where you can discuss what your use cases are right, um, right, talk right. to some of the engineers from the projects talk to the tech talk to the outreach maybe find out a bit more about how the market's developing where it might go what the size of the market all those sorts of things and uh, i think that's a really important way of looking at looking at the broad ecosystem beyond just the sort of fairly tight set of folks who are doing the actual work on it this is the people who are going to use the framework on which uh which will which hopefully the ccc projects are building and i'm going to bridge that because we've just got about, th about three minutes left and so i thought oh, you know, let, let's, let's close on what do, what what do we what do we think is next for this right and and, and I'll, I'll just start mike because i want to build on the comment you just made which is i think what's next is really helping get this out into the wild right and i think this is also an important part of the vision for the competition Computing consortium is it's not just about defining the technologies and bringing the technical people together it's also about getting industry involved and helping people see how they can apply these technologies in practical ways right and it, it may be you know, a banking organization i know you know, i'm working with a, with a big uh, medical researcher who's using confidential computing to develop algorithms that are going to diagnose disease for all of us in a hospital setting right Th these, these are things that weren't possible before in the world without these sorts of enabling technologies, right? So I think that's what I'm excited about is with the with the foundation we built organizationally and collaboratively across this technology ecosystem, now being able to go to the end users and say, here's what you can do with it. But 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 Eva, what 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 do you want to see happen? Like what, what's your hope for what happens next? Where do you see this going? I, I see two things. Um, hopefully I have time to cover both of them. First is <laughs> growth of attestation, right? We have the attestation working group that I that that I kicked off and, and Mike helped form back in April or so of, of, of this year, 2021. Um, I think attestation is increasingly proving itself to be the the axle, the center of so much work across a wide swath of um, the the sort of evolution of secure distributed computing. And privacy concerns globally are becoming uh, seen and talked oh. about as a fundamental human right, <laughs> right? European law, yeah. uh, India, a lot of other countries have been passing or debating these laws, California and Washington state as well. So I think this consortium and, and the products and companies involved here have a, a pretty unique um, opportunity to really support uh, you know, increasing protecting individual privacy or conversely doing a lot of harm to it if we enable companies to abuse that. So there's there's responsibility here as well. With great power so comes I'll, I'll, try and be very, I'll try and be very quick. One, I've got two things as well. One is I think we, we, we're seeing frameworks. I think we're seeing a, a discussion uh, on uh, and a convergence on what it means and what companies need uh, and how those solutions will come out which is great that's begin to mature the other thing is i want to um want to meet some people again and see them in real life because i really miss it <laughs> yeah nice absolutely you guys yep. um, <laughs> uh, and you folks and I, I think you know this is a really important thing for the industry i really do i i would we welcome more people to come along to our meetings we'd love to see you uh, and hopefully we can meet up in 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 real life at some point that would be great and thank you david and thank you ava as always for but a great, great time. I've really enjoyed myself. So, Thanks, David. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. Everyone, thank you everybody for joining us. It's a pleasure working with both you, Mike and Ava, on making the consortium successful. If you're interested in what you heard here in the session today, I'd encourage you to visit confidentialcomputing.io. You'll got, see more information there about the consortium, opportunities to get involved, uh, the members and the work that we're doing. Uh, hopefully you've learned something here, both about confidential computing as a technology, but also about just uh, how to build and evolve a, a thriving organization and, and thriving consortium here. So thank you everybody for joining us and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah.